Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. There's something that's going on. You have the so-called Mexicans getting locked up in cages. ICE is ripping families apart. You have police brutality happening. Our people getting gunned down in the street. Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, Philandro Castile. The list goes on. What are you black and Hispanic men gonna do about it? You gonna keep letting our people be destroyed or you gonna stand up? Read it again. The book of Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 4. Unto you, O man, I call in my voice and to the sons of men. So knowing that God is dealing with us first, we gotta get ourselves in order. So before you can lead the people, you got to get your mind right. Are you angry about what's going on amongst our people? You pissed off about it, bro? So you have to stand up. Ain't nobody finna come do nothing. Not none of these politicians, these motivational speakers. We must stand up. That's why we out here. So before you stand up, this is what you got to do. Start working on yourself. Read. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. Yeah. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. Read it again from the top. If any man shall defile the temple of God. You see how I say man first? God is dealing with the man first, my brother. But that goes for the woman as well. So any people on this sign right here, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, if we defile our temple, the temple is referring to your body. If you defile your temple with what? Weed, crack, heroin, lean, pills, cigarettes, read, him shall God destroy. So how will God destroy you? You see them commercials with people with holes in their neck from smoking squares 30 years, 20 years, that can happen to you. You can get cancer in your liver from smoking. Look it up. Weed destroys your brain cells. Weed ain't clean neither. Teach. God said if you defile your temple, he'll do what? Him shall God destroy. It's many ways he can destroy you. You can get hit by a car. A stray bullet can hit you. In other words, God is not going to let a defiled temple stand. I'm going to make it plain for you. If this building never get taken care of and the wood just rot out, the metal start to rust, what the city going to do? They going to tear the building down, right? So if you keep on putting all that garbage into that body that God made, what he going to do to you? He going to tear it down. So brother, first and foremost with us becoming leaders, we got to get all of that stuff out of our system. If you smoking weed, you doing any type of drugs, you cannot lead nobody if you moving like that. You understand what I'm saying to you, bro? You got to be sober minded. If you doing it, change it. That's what we telling you. And don't think it's hard or it's, it can't be done because we did it. It's going to be some bumps in the road, but you got to start somewhere. They need you. You see over here, people's nodding off. 
I ain't seen people nodding off since 98, early 2000s. You come over here, people nodding off. They need help. Our people is sick. They in a destroyed state. First Maccabees 343. So as the leaders, this is what we got to do. And we only calling a man that's brave. We only calling a man that's valiant. We only calling a man that's not worried about what somebody think about them, who really care about their people. You brothers that scared, don't want to stand up, we ain't worried about you. Read the book of 1 Maccabees, chapter one to another. Let us restore the decayed estate of our people. Read it again. This was the mindset of the man that came before you. This Bible is about black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. These are your ancestors. Men that stood up. They saw what was going on with their people. They said, we're not going to sit down. We're going to rise up that same spirit that came with the civil rights movement the black panthers all those black liberation movements the brown berets the young lords that spirit is here again That's only right. this time we have the missing puzzle piece keep god's laws read that they said one to another let us restore the decayed estate of our people. When you see our people nodding off of drugs, some of these young brothers in their 20s, they nod off lean. They so destroyed in the mind, they crushing pills up in the lean, calling them molly water. Just destroying they self more and more and more until they kill they self. They need leaders. Hey. That's why we come out here, the Lord is calling you lead your people but you got to get your mind right first corinthians 10 and 4. then we're going to touch on some rules that the man must follow because for a minute the sisters was making little comments anytime you get on a black and hispanic woman they always got something to say now we finna talk about the black and hispanic man and what they must do to change their self read second corinthians 10 and 4. because as a leader before you start correcting people, you got to get you right. Read that. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4. Read it. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So when they come, when we come out here and they see us marching, you got crazy brothers that think they're going to get weapons and try to mobile. No, that's not going to happen. Huey Newton and them tried to do that. That's not going to happen like that. Or lose something, or loot something. That don't help. What's going to help is us getting our minds right. Read that again. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. This is our weapon of war. You know why? The Bible destroys all the lies that have been taught in the world. One of the lies that they tell in the world is that God is white. Guess what? The Bible show you that God is black. That's right. Another lie they tell in the world, they say Jesus is white. The Bible shows you he's black. That's right. Another lie, hold on. This is the same thing that I was talking about. This is what the black man is focused on. Playing around. Music, games. That's what the black man is focused on. Let that pass. That's what we're working about. That's why our community is failing. Because that's what we want to do. Everything a joke in the game to the black and Hispanic man. We got to snap out of that little boy state. Read that. The book of 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, chapter 10 and verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Another lie. They said Jesus Christ white. The Bible show you he black. Right. The biggest lie that they told our people, hear me? They said we nothing. They said we the scum of the earth. The Bible says we are God's chosen people. That's right. And the rest of the races of people are nothing. Right. That's what the Bible says. Read. Casting down imagination. That's what we do when we come out here. We cast down the imagination that it's okay for the black and Hispanic woman to show her behind when she walk outside. That's an imagination. We come out here, we cast down the imagination that it's okay to gang bang. It's not okay to gang bang. No, it ain't. It's not okay to gang bang. My brothers, 
You telling me you, you happy going to funerals? So, bro, how you gonna say it's okay? Come talk to me. No, it's not okay. Read that. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Anything that exalts itself against God, we tear down with the word of God. That's right. So as a man, as a leader, you must be that, that example for your people. You understand what I'm saying? Read. And bring it into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Uh -huh. And have it in readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Now hold on. Right there, it talked about revenge and disobedience. Correcting anything that's out of order. But it said one key part. Get that. When your obedience is fulfilled. So, before the black and Hispanic man can lead the people, he must get his mind right. Hey. You got to put the drugs down so you can focus. You can't focus if you have lean, weed, and pills. Heroin, crack. You got to put that stuff down so you can focus. Let's get some laws for the man. Leviticus 19.27. Black and Hispanic man, here are some laws that you must be following. We read some rules for the woman and we're going to get right back to them. Read. Leviticus chapter 19 verse 27. Read Ye shall not round the corners of your head, neither shall you mark the corners of thy beard. Read it again. Ye shall not round the corners of your head, neither shall thou mark the corners of thy beard. So what is that saying? As an Israelite man, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we are not to shave our head bald. We are not to shave our face bald. Right. Right. Here's why. That's a custom of the other nations. That's not our custom. Bring it out. Just like when you see the East Indians, they wear the red dot on their forehead. That's their custom. You're not going to put no red dot on your forehead. The so-called Chinese, they shave their face ball. We don't shave our face ball. We're not supposed to. Because that's a rule of God and we as chosen people, we're supposed to follow everything he say. That's right. You're not supposed to follow what man say over what God say. Right. That's another reason why our people have not changed as of yet. They worry about what somebody else going to say. Give me Leviticus 21 and 5. Read out. You understand that? These are rules that the man must be following. Read. Leviticus chapter 21 and verse 5. They shall not make boldness upon their head. There you go. What's some examples? Brothers love Michael Jordan. You can't get your hair cut like that. That's against God's laws. Read. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. That's not your custom. Grow your beard out. Think about that. They want you to shave your facial hair for a job so you can look like a little boy. So you can look less threatening. Read. Nor make any cuttings in their flesh. Uh oh. How many people out here like getting tattoos? That's against God. As a Israelite man and woman, you are not supposed to get tattoos. Tattoos is a custom of the other nations. And guess what? Our people, we blindly follow whatever other races do. That's right. How about natives, though? Why about the natives with the, like, tribal... You talking about the Samoans? Not even Samoans. Samoans and, like, Native Americans. And more, more so, like, uh, uh, South American. And, like, Amerindians in general. Though. That's against God's laws. If you talking about the Native Americans that was over here, the Aztecs, the Mayans, the Incas... When they did that, they was going against God. They was not supposed to do that. We just read it. Read it one more time. They shall not make boldness upon their head, neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard, nor make any cuttings in their flesh. So that's against God. So when people get these tattoos, what they tell you, you at risk. When that needle hits your flesh, you're at risk for getting what? A disease. Hepatitis. Think about that. Hepatitis. Exactly. Tattoo man probably tattoo maybe a hundred people a day. And you go in there. He claim he cleaned his needles. Let's be real. Luckily, you might not get none. But you put yourself at risk. That's right. It's against God. You ain't supposed to do it in the first place. Give me Proverbs 3 and 31. 
Let's see the mindset. Read. The book of Proverbs, chapter 3, and verse 31. What not? I gave a couple examples. We gave a couple examples. We talking to our brother. We talking to all our people out here. And you may say to yourself, why do we as a people follow the other races? Read that. Envy thou not the oppressor and choose none of his ways. Read that again. Why does the black and Hispanic man, Hispanic woman, black woman follow the other races of people and what they do? Read it again. Envy thou not the oppressor and choose. Wait, what's that word? Why they do it? The oppressor. Uh-uh, what's that word? Why do they follow the other races and everything they do? Envy. What? Envy. What? Envy. You envying people that God said you better than. God said you're supposed to be over those people, but you envy them and you want to follow their ways. They shave their head bald, you shave your head bald. They get tattoos, you get tattoos. They smoke weed, snort blows, you do the same thing because you envy them. Here's another thing. They dye their hair blonde. Some of them is naturally blonde. You dye your hair blonde. Why? Read it again. Envy. No, not the oppressor. Because you envy your oppressor. That's right. This the killer part. Our sisters are still going to put white women hair in their head and needs the people gunning down their people. That's how destroyed we is. You gonna go put blonde hair in your hair to look like them and they killing you. That's confusion. Read it again. Envy, no, not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. We envying the same people that's oppressing us. God said don't choose none of their ways. These is the ways that God set before you for you to follow. Give me Proverbs 1 and 10. What's going on, bro? Make sure you get a flyer, man. Hey, get a brother a flyer right here. You got a minute, man? Let me holler at you. What's your name? Brian. Brian? You like you've been around, Brian, for a long time. Like you've been through some things. I can tell, bro. How you feel about what our people going through in the earth right now? It is. So as men, it's a bunch of men standing here. What we going to do about it? What are we going to do to comfort our people? We got to stand up. You're absolutely right. Let me ask you this. Is looting the answer? Hey, you are wise for saying that, bro. A lot of brothers don't be having sense. They say, tear it up. Burn it down. But wait a minute. Your grandma got to get her prescription from that Walgreens. What sense does that make? Now your grandma can't get her prescription. She has to take daily or she'll die. Your simple behind, and I'm speaking in general, brothers. Your simple behind, go with your guys, and y'all tear down the only Walgreens in your neighborhood. That makes no sense. Now, the stores that's in the suburbs, whenever they get a hint of looting finna happen, they block them all off. Now where you gonna shop at? What's going to happen? And then you know your neighborhood don't got it in the first place. Exactly. And you tear down the only one. That's one of the things we got to teach young brothers, Brian. We got to teach young brothers to think with some sense. Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. Brothers get mad and brothers act out of their emotions. Part of the reason brothers act out of their emotions is because you grew up in a single parent home. The same emotions and reactions your mother has you had the same reactions. The only difference is, brothers, you got a gun in your hand. Think about the shootings, how they happen. He said something about my mans. I'ma shoot him. He stepped on my mics. I'ma steal on him. That's emotional. Don't no man move like that. You say what? That's looting? Stupid. That is stupid. Don't no man move off their emotions. Read this. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 7 Surely oppression Maketh a wise man mad Stop right there Oppression makes a man mad Naturally read that flyer We on division and costner get up with us Oppression naturally Makes a man angry 
When you hear about Breonna Taylor, that make you angry. When you watch the video of Ahmaud Aubrey, that make you angry. Be honest, some of y'all was crying when y'all seen that video. Two white men claim they was doing a citizen's arrest. Chased that brother down and shot him with a shotgun. Oppression makes you angry, but this is how you must react. Surely oppression making a wise man mad, uh -huh. and a gift destroyed the heart. Read it again. Surely oppression making a wise man mad. When a wise man get mad, he think of solutions. A wise man does not wreck his whole neighborhood to the point he cannot get no supplies for his family. That makes no sense. You're not moving like a wise man. You're not moving like a leader. You're moving out of your emotions. When you move out of your emotions, you will destroy everything around you. Garfield Park was a prime example. We hear about it. People got to travel all across different neighborhoods to go shop because Negroes moving out of their emotions. Read it again. Surely oppression making their wise man mad and a gift destroyed the heart. Read that last part again. Because in light of everything that been happening, they come through the neighborhood and they give you free food, posters, and all of this other nonsense. But they not fixing the issue. They not fixing the matter at hand. What are they doing? A gift destroyed the heart. Gifts will cloud your judgment. They come through and they set up all this stuff and then you forget about what just happened. Think about this. Everybody that's down there buying and selling, getting whatever little merchandise they want today, they ain't thinking about Breonna Taylor. They ain't thinking about George Floyd. You gotta understand, our enemies know us. Your enemy is not the brother that stay on the next block. So we were talking about standing up for the black man to stand up for the black woman and uh, therefore the seed as well. Right? So how would you say one would initiate standing up? It's got to start today. That's granted. It's got to start now. It's got to be continued. But I mean, as far as like the action, what, 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 what word would you describe the action of standing up? Examples. Example. Examples. You must show, I'm going to give you some, I'm going to explain. Our young brothers need to see a better example than what they are seeing. A lot of times, elders, men up in age, they complain about the brothers who post up in front of the store, who sagging, had caught. They learned it from a lot of them. A lot of these old heads walking around as original members from a lot of these gangs, as quiet as it's kept. You showed the bad example. Now, what you created has rose up and gone crazy. Now you trying to say something. Right, what you created is against you. But back then, you was chief. You was chief enforcer, you was this, that, and the third. Now those same young brothers that was watching your every move, they took, they took up what you did and they running with it and they going crazy. You must show a better example to the young brothers. That's, right. That's the first thing with the laws of God. Right. They got to learn how to be a man. Right. Selling drugs, posting up ain't going to make you no man. It's going to get you killed. That's right. You want right here. Young brother walk past. I say, bro, you, how you feel about funerals? I said, you like going to funerals? He said, hell no. So how is gang banging okay? A lot of these brothers ain't going to say they done lost a lot of friends. A lot of friends to gang violence. Which mean what? It's time for a change. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 
144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.